never done that before. I uh, needed a haircut and uh, all the barbers are closed with COVID, so I shaved my head. I don't know if my razor was up to the task, but I guess I did the job. Anyway, welcome back to another episode in the ongoing saga of Who Killed Martin Zarugula? You know, it kind of made me think after tearing all that arugula out. I spend a lot more time killing plants than I do growing them. And I know this is a farm and all, but, you know, most of my time I spend weeding or tearing things out or even harvesting. Harvesting. We kill our food before we eat it. So, that's me, plant murderer. So all this plant killing made me realize something about weeding, which is I spend probably half my time on the farm weeding. Like, that's a lot of time. And it made me realize something about organic food that I don't think I realized just going to the supermarket, which is that the extra price you pay for organic food, that's all weeding. Conventional farmers, they have it figured out. They just call it, dump poison on it and call it a day. But if you want organic food, well, you're going to pay for the weeding. Some of you were asking, you know, why were you tearing all that arugula out in the first place? It was perfectly good arugula. It looked very tasty. And it was. And I didn't know the answer, because I'm just farmhand. So I asked, and uh, apparently the reason was, well, we got tomatoes to plant. They'd been waiting, and um, this week was tomato week. Um, oh, and apparently arugula doesn't do so well in the heat, so... It's warming up, the crops change, and uh, now we have tomatoes. As you can see, we planted a lot of tomatoes. Uh, it took us the better part of a day. They're all on leashes so they don't escape at night, or so we can hold them up when they're full of cherry tomatoes. There is an ankle bracelet uh, down at the bottom and a loop attaching to the string. And my role was to tie all of those loops. And the loop needs is special needs to not slip. So I did a knot called a bow line, which is fishing knot. But uh, this is a farm and it's also useful on a farm. And the way you tie a bow line, you make a little loop in your hand and you thread the end up and around the top and down in the middle and pull it together. I got really fast at these, but it still took probably two hours to tie all these. And I made a discovery, which is that I like farm work, but I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again. I'd say this greenhouse worth of bow lines is about as much bow line tying as I want to do in, in a day or a week. I can't imagine what it would be like to work in a giant industrial greenhouse and just, well, do the same thing all day. I think, I think it would hurt. My uh, thumb swelled up after because it was the friction of the knot and that was just two hours. I feel like this haircut makes me look like a monk. Do I look like a monk to you? I hadn't really been thinking about this whole thing as a spiritual journey, but I guess it kind of could be that. You know, I've shaved my head, and I'm going to learn all sorts of things about myself on this journey that I wouldn't otherwise know, so... You know, I'm going to make that my question of the week. What do you think I can learn about myself from all this? Or if that's too out there for you, just tune in next week and I'll be back with more farming stuff. Um, you can do that. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can find out more about the film project that I'm making at thehandsthatfeedus.ca. You can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can do all three. Um, and uh, tune in next week and uh, I'll be back with more. See you then.